Welcome to episode 47 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I interviewed Victoria Formikova and asked her how she got started in sourcing. You know, it's like a little bit long story because I am kind of switcher. Mm-hmm. I came to IT industry from finance industry. Uh, so I was working in bank, I was working in uh, finance sales with clients, with long projects, but um, we had crisis in Ukraine uh, about revolution. So I was thinking that I need to change something. Uh, and uh, I was young and uh, I didn't see uh, like prospective uh, in the banking industry uh, for myself. Uh, so I decided to find something more uh, modern with young people, more dynamic. And it was IT and why, uh, and I chose recruiting. So I didn't uh, know about sourcing. Uh, I knew like there is recruiting. So I decided to uh, find some job in recruiting because it like, it is work with people. So uh, I was selling some bank banking products, uh, banks, and uh, I was thinking, okay, I can sell IT companies. Uh, I can sell jobs. And uh, that's why I um, choose recruiting. And when I was searching for jobs, uh, I found uh, uh, like vacancy of uh, trainee, trainee talent sourcer. Uh, and it was company, um, maybe top 10 in Ukraine companies, uh, like top five here in uh, Lviv. And it's a very big company, like more than 1,000 people there. Um, and uh, I thought, cool, it's a cool choice, it's a big company. So um, I sent my CV, they invited me to the interview and they chose me. So I started there as a trainee. Um, there was already like a sourcer, uh, sourcing um, team. Um, it was 2017 and mm-hmm not usual for Ukrainian market to uh, have like separate sourcing teams but uh, there were al- already like six sourcers or five sourcers and uh, it was easy for me to get some knowledge because there are people who can share this mm-hmm. knowledge and my start was like very very fast uh, and then <laughs> I'm here so um, I started there, I started work, working there. There I heard about hackathons because it was like an obligation to <laughs> part, part in hackathon. So, so there I started, but uh, in a few ma- months after starting, um, I understood that for me, sourcing uh, is a little bit uh, narrow. So it's not a lot of responsibilities. It's interesting, it's, it's fast, it's dynamic, but I wanted to have like uh, verbal communication. I wanted to cooperate, cooperate with hiring managers, with project managers, and uh, I decided to become a full, full cycle recruiter. So almost for all these three years, uh, I'm working as full cycle recruiting, okay. but I am like, adept of uh, active recruiting so i'm sourcing every time looking for some passive candidates because i think that it's more interesting and they're more quality i mean other than that the kind of team that you were learning from did you have any kind of formal training or was there any people that you were following to kind of you know get to know the tips and tricks of sourcing when you started we already had like um, established team you know Mm -hmm some uh, rules uh, with some best practices already so like from the first day they shared with me uh, best practices uh, also the company invested a lot in some uh, training some uh, events conferences and in uh, like few months after start like in two or three months i um, i went to workshop uh, of martin lee mm-hmm. So it was like long workshop, workshop for all day, and um, he gave us like uh, great basic info, like uh, all sourcing techniques. Uh, also, um, some Ukrainian events, some conferences. We always 
somebody from team like mm -hmm. and share uh, after that uh, knowledge. Also, we had some resource base where we can find a lot of uh, stuff. But um, for me, it's more comfortable to learn by doing mm -hmm. more and more practice and you become more successful. So I am a little bit of a fast learner and uh, I can just look at something and I will understand how to do it. So for me, it was easy to perform like for from first day. And what does your kind of sourcing tools look like? Uh, do you have any kind of go-to tools that you like to use or is it, or is it more of a you know, boolean strings and, and things like that? You know, when I was a sourcer, I used a lot of tools. I mm -hmm. had a tool set, a lot of extensions. Uh, I always tried some new things. But uh, after, and it was my first year. But after some time, um, I understand that... Uh, for some usual vacancies, I mean like popular, te popular technology, like middle level, senior level, there are almost enough people uh, in LinkedIn and Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you can start from LinkedIn, like um, from basic LinkedIn search or X-ray or just combine it. And then um, if it finished, but it, it is not often, but Anyway, if finished, you can go to Facebook and uh, find there like uh, more people and it will be enough. When you need some technical unicorn, uh, very senior people like with a lot of technologies in their stack, you can go to GitHub and start. And uh, for the last two years, I do not use some specific tools. I have like few extensions uh, for emails and favorite is improver. Mm -hmm. um, I have connectifier links. Uh, I have uh, like amazing hiring plugin and um, usually it's enough. But mm -hmm. if you need to find something very specific, uh, I will just uh, source for source <laughs> and then I will use the source to find uh, this person. Or I used uh, Amazing Hiring because I uh, won it uh, on the hackathon. Um, it was useful. Also, we have here in Ukraine a uh, useful thing and it, it is not very expensive. Uh, Turbo Hiring uh, for contacts especially. And for now, I think uh, that's all. If somebody like me should uh, start and you know either hire people in Ukraine to work in Ukraine or are looking to to find Ukrainians who would like to relocate, what do we have to think about? Like, what is is it difficult for somebody from the outside, or what you know? What do we have to change to uh, to source in in Ukraine? First of all, you need to be very fast mm -hmm. because our market is very dynamic. So we had like 200,000 of engineers. We had like more than 4,000 companies. Uh, and um, you need to be fast. You don't need to look for unicorn, unicorn to make some long sourcing strategy. Uh, you need to understand who you need, what engineer. Um, and just do it fast and to make uh, some interesting message uh, to uh, make a full description of your project or for you, of your opportunity because um, to reach one candidate uh, like to make him reply me I need to send 10, 10 messages and it for usual reply I don't mean that he will uh, consider my opportunity. And to make someone consider opportunity, you need to send more messages. Mm -hmm. And they get like 10 messages per, per day, five messages per day. Depends on technology, but for popular technologies, it's like this. Um, and about relocate, uh, for example, if you will look for somebody not for Ukrainian market, I had this experience, but very, very small. and. Uh, First of all, you can look for someone who posted in LinkedIn that he is looking for opportunities for relocate. But then uh, you can try everyone because um, a lot of people just 
thinking, okay, I can try. You can go to companies who locate people. Mm -hmm. For example, some big outsourcing companies like uh, Luxoft, Epam, um, there are a lot of people who are waiting for relocate. You can reach these people uh, there. And also you can just Google what companies uh, relocate people. We have um, Doe for some uh, IT topics and uh, you can go to these companies. Mm -hmm. But if you're working for local market, you need to be fast, you need to be uh, polite, uh, you need to have like full information about project, about vacancy, you need to make it interesting. Okay. And uh, if LinkedIn is finished, go to X-Ray. If uh, Google is finished, uh, like LinkedIn X-Ray, go to Facebook, almost all engineers uh, are there. For somebody who's uh, won hackathons before, do you have any uh, tips for people who like doing hackathons but mm -hmm. might not be so good yet? Like what to do and, and how they can get better? You can go to sourcing games and try. Uh, start, uh, I think better to start with uh, amazing hiring sourcing games like mm -hmm. Those hackathons, uh, because you know, um, I won this hackathon like a year ago or something like this. But before, I already was winner of hackathons, but with Alex team. Mm -hmm. I worked in company, and uh, it was uh, like our responsibility to participate in hackathons. And we made some trainings. We used uh, previous questions. We used sourcing games, and this, this is why we was successful on these hackathons. Um, and if you want to win at Hackathon, just practice, go to sourcing games. Um, if it's not enough, you can find some questions, for example, for, uh, from Hackathons uh, that was at Sourcing Summit or SourceCon. You can try with this and um, use amazing hiring webinars, amazing hiring presentations. Uh, there are a lot of hacks and uh, these hacks are very useful for hackathons. Mm -hmm. uh, like in Ukrainian recruiting at hackathon, you need to be fast. You need to think fast, you need to type fast, to search fast. And also sometimes solution is very simple and uh, you don't need to go just very deep in the question. If it's not simple and if, it, uh, if you can't find it with some simple Boolean string, then try something uh, more complicated. But uh, first of all, think fast and think simple. <laughs> like with your team doing a lot of these, both internal hackathons, doing all the external hackathons as well, did you use the things that you kind of learned in the hackathon in, in your daily work as well? Like, was it helpful for your team? Helpful here in Ukraine for some soft skills. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're talking about hard skills, our market uh, is very different uh, from a uh, Europe market and USA market. And uh, we don't need so much tools. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, when you are um, at the hackathon, you see there are some tools that you never saw before, <laughs> but you can't use it here in your daily work because uh, we have like a very big community and uh, for usual vacancy, it's enough for you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it uh, develops your attentiveness, it develops your, uh, you become faster, you become more confident. Because, for example, if your team uh, won a hackathon, so how you feel inside this team? You feel like, oh, our team rocks. So um, it's useful from the point of soft, soft skills. Uh, but of course, uh, everybody can have some unicorn vacancy when you need to find uh, someone. For example, I had a situation when, when I need a lot of people uh, who is English speaking mm -hmm. without previous um, job experience because it was like entry level position, but they must have like uh, fluency, advanced level of English. So uh, I used some uh, tool. I already forget what was this tool, but <laughs> I found some spreadsheets of uh, people who graduated from one of our universities uh, with uh, uh, masters in uh, English philology. Mm -hmm. So it can be useful in some uh, difficult situations, but for 
daily work uh, just for soft skills. But anyway, it's great experience. And for example, if someday you want to relocate or to find uh, some job um, from foreign customer, it can be a great point for your CV. I, I, even I had this story sacrifice. So, if people want to follow you, Victoria, where can they can they best do that? LinkedIn, Facebook. So as usual. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you for your time, and uh, yeah, I hope to uh, to meet you again one day, and uh, and see you soon. Great. Thank you. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.